All right, pressing play. Uh, today I am doing a commentary on John Carpenter's Halloween. Uh, this is a movie <clears throat> I saw this years ago. Uh, I've seen it many times. Uh, I first saw this movie when I was like 13 or so, 12, 13. I actually saw H2O first. I had to sneak into a theater, buy a ticket to like I think Simon Birch. Uh, just to see H2O, and I remember back then they made this big deal out of the fact that Michael Myers and Laurie Strode are going at it again. And I saw the movie, and it I liked it okay. I, I didn't love it. And then, of course, I saw the original uh, subsequently. And for some f reason that I've never been able to figure out, Halloween, 1978, the John Carpenter version, this is everybody's. Every film director, when they're asked, oh, your favorite horror movie, they all have the same answer. Halloween. What the fuck have I been missing for the past 20 years with this movie? Uh, needless to say, not my favorite. Might even... The more I've heard this, the more it's become my least favorite. Okay, now just to talk about what's going on. Uh, we're looking at a pumpkin, and we're seeing the credits. And, of course, we're hearing uh, John Carpenter's legendary score for Halloween. Which, by the way, this is a fantastic music score. I, I'm not taking anything away from Carpenter uh, as far as the music in this movie I also think this is the only reason this movie is as popular as it is. Because if people haven't been telling me for 20 plus years, every time the subject has come up, their favorite horror movie is Halloween. Uh, I just, I don't... It's the one that I cannot come up with a logical justification other than... I like this thing with the kids right here. I don't know what the fuck they're saying. Uh, something about black cats and goblins on Halloween night. All right, now we're we're starting the movie off with um, this really long track. Which, by the way, John Carpenter directs a scene beautifully, uh, and this is this opening is no exception. Although there is a couple of things that go on in here that uh, might be worth commenting on. Uh, but anyway, I've never been able to figure out what it is. That I've narrowed it down to two possibilities. One, they saw this movie before they saw any other horror movie, and it was the first horror movie they've ever seen, and they were like 12 or 13. I started watching horror movies when I was around, I want to say 6 or 7. I discovered Critters and Freddy Krueger, and it was just... I, I, I fell in love with the genre. These movies, n not so much. So... Like, I can give you a million and a half reasons why I love the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But not just, aside from that, any fucking movie, any horror movie... So... But there's so many other ones. Like, if you said my favorite horror movie of all time is Alien, alright, it's not my favorite horror movie, but I get it. I, I get what the attraction to Alien is. Uh, you're in space, there's a monster that it, you can't, you know, shoot it or... Because if this thing bleeds, it'll eat a hole through your spaceship and kill everybody. Uh, the whole setup, the intrigue about, like, well, who was the guy driving that spaceship that you saw in the beginning? What is the story behind that? It seems so multi... It's, it's a very multi-layered movie, to be as simple as it is. Not to mention, the monster is really interesting. It has an amazing life cycle that is, uh, it's, you know, just, it's completely, so I, I get that. Okay, so, <clears throat> we've been following Michael Myers around the house. He's grabbed, uh, of course, a knife out of the drawer. The boyfriend is now leaving after giving uh, Judith Myers possibly the worst and last sexual experience of her life. I mean, seriously, who, who fucks this quick? Like, I think this dude might have blown off in his pants before they even came off. He's leaving that fast. 
All right, so Michael Myers is going upstairs. Now, aside from the fact that John Carpenter got all this in one shot, which is phenomenal. It is an amazing uh, feat of filmmaking. And I'm not even saying that sarcastically. Like, this is a very well-directed scene. Of course, now he's putting the mask on. But, uh... <clears throat> definitely taking its time. I forget how slow this movie is. Alright, there we are. Our first pair of tits in this movie, which we don't really see very well. And Michael Myers is now gonna stab her. The worst stabbing. Where is he hitting her? And why is he looking up at his own hand? And is he even bending his elbow? Uh, this is the most unconvincing stabbing I've ever seen in a movie. Now, granted, you can't see most of it because everything is shot through these two eye holes. But it, it's so obvious he's not even coming close to hitting her. And this is one thing, and th this has really bugged me even more since 2007 and Rob Zombie's remake came out. Everybody talks about what a piece of shit that movie is. And this is a masterpiece. And it's like it's not even the best in its own decade. All right, so the parents have come up, they've taken the mask off of Michael Myers, and they go, Michael? Now they proceed to stand here like asses. Even the mother just sticks her who sticks their hands in her? He's holding a knife! A knife with blood on it, and you're just going to stick your hand in your pocket, and they're both just staring at him like assholes. This is great for John Carpenter's direction, but in terms of story, I don't really know what it's doing here. I mean, it's... It looks interesting, it's very picturesque, but that is not how real people react to anything. Alright, so now we're, we're in Smith's Grove, Illinois. It's October 30th, 1978. I don't know why I feel the need to, to tell, tell you everything I'm looking at here. Rain! Alright, so anyway, back to my, my vetching about this movie and everyone's love of it. So, my theory is, number one, you saw this movie, and it was the first thing you ever saw, horror-wise. And those tend to stick with you. Like, I, I think Jason Goes to Hell is the best Friday the 13th, because I saw it when I was seven years old. And at seven years old, that movie's pretty gruesome and scares the shit out of you. So there, there's maybe a bias, and that's another movie everyone says is just terrible. I think it's it's awesome. Like, it's... Uh, the Friday the 13th story is kind of stupid. Uh, the movies have no real consistency. It's just Jason killing people over and over again, and uh, Jason Goes to Hell found, found a new and interesting way for him to do it. And because it's not the same thing as it was in the last eight movies, everyone, you know, has to say it sucks... But also, maybe it's just sticking with me more, because I saw it so early. It was one of the first, you know, horror movies I ever saw, especially th that one. Uh, I mean, there's a naked girl that just gets cut straight up the middle. Uh, it's, it's a gore fest, Jason Goes to Hell. So either that's the case with this movie, which I'll give you a little leeway for, but then there's, like, the... The other reason that I think people say that they uh, claim that they this is their favorite movie, and I give no leeway to it, and it's because they think they have to. They think that when they hear the words, what's your favorite horror movie, that if they don't say Halloween, I guess they'll sound like they're not as good at watching movies as everyone else or something. I don't know what the fucking deal is. Once again, like Hellraiser. If you said Hellraiser's my favorite horror movie, and you said, why? And they're like, because the monsters are awesome. Well, I can't argue that. The monsters in Hellraiser are fucking amazing. This movie, I can't imagine a simpler setup. It, I've never found this, like I said, I never found this movie pretty particularly scary. I think it has a great soundtrack. Uh, I think Michael Myers as a character is kind of boring. It compar comparatively to every other movie, like I said, even in its own decade, maybe with the exception of something like Ants or Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, <clears throat> all the things that people give this movie an insane amount of credit for, the suspense and the mystery, 
The suspense is nothing happening, and the mystery is we never bothered to write half of this movie. So this is the part where he's uh, escaping from the, uh, the lab. Or not the lab. <laughs> well, it might as well be a lab. It's an insane asylum. You... Okay, so Michael Myers just escaped in a car that he somehow just knows how to drive. It's not that driving is difficult, but for... They say that Haddonfield is a hundred miles away from uh, Smith's Grove, this insane asylum. Somehow, he's able to drive a hundred miles and stop at every red light, every stop sign. He's able to yield and follow street signs even though he's been locked up since he was six years old. How do they explain this? Because he's evil. And, you know what, that's just, that shit just ain't good enough. How does he even know how to get back to Haddonfield? How is he able to read a map? If he's, I mean, look, he's been locked up there since he's six. Then mentally, he's still six. He's learned nothing. Loomis makes it very apparent that he's done nothing but sit in a room and stare at the wall for the past, what was it, 15 years? The graphic just came up. I guess I should know that. Alright, here we are. Jamie Lee Curtis, one of the most overrated scream queens of all time. I don't get what the big deal with her is either. Like, any top ten list you see on YouTube about horror movies, uh, top ten uh, uh, scream queens, top ten horror, uh, women of horror, Jamie Lee Curtis, Halloween is always number one. And I don't get that either. She's an incredibly boring character. She has no... In fact, none of these three girls... Okay, maybe Annie, the Annie character, played by uh, Nancy Loomis. She has a little bit of personality and kind of carries this movie. But Laurie Strode is thoroughly uninteresting. And if you have the soundtrack to this movie, by the way, which I do on a compact disc... Why did I say compact disc? Uh, if you have it, I have it on CD. Every single track is do 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 or da 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 da. It's ten tracks of the same two melodies. But once again, the music in this movie is absolutely incredible. But and it was a thing they did in um, movies, horror movies. Uh, anyway, is you always got, in the first film, the bare minimum of what the story was capable of. And this is for a lot of reasons. One, because it was the first conception of the story. And it, they also, the first film usually did not get the highest budget. They would give the bigger budgets a lot of times to the sequels. Unless the first one was kind of mediocre, but this one did gigantic. So, obviously, in the sequel, they can move up and go into, like, you know, have Michael Myers killing people in a hospital. And there he is, looking. But people credit this movie with having so much mystery. And all the mystery that they're talking about is just shit that they, they never bothered to actually write into the story. And there's... Okay, now here we are, the first of several sequences where Michael Myers just stands there. He's standing there watching Laurie walk... Which, okay, look, I'll, I'll grant you that that's creepy. But it's not creepier than Black Christmas, which, that's a movie where you don't even see the killer. But you feel his presence all the way through the movie. I mean... Uh, he does the phone calls. You get some insight into who he is because he's always screaming, Agnes! Billy! Do oh, with the baby, Agnes! Yeah. And then sometimes he's just going, I want to lick your pussy. I want to lick your little pretty big pussy. But that is some insight into who this guy is, which is a raving nut. But you can go, okay, well, who is Billy? Who is Agnes? What is, what is the story with the baby? 
uh, something happened that fucked this guy up, and now he needs to kill sorority girls on Christmas. And the only time, the only bit you see of the killer in Black Christmas is his eyeballs in shadows. And that's mystery that works. With Michael Myers, you know everything about this dude, except why nothing can kill him. <clears throat> And it's all just very vaguely explained away by, he's evil. Why does he kill these girls? Because he's evil. Why doesn't he die when people shoot him, run over him, shove a grenade up his ass? He's evil. It cryogenically freeze his head and blow him up. He's evil. Shoot him into space. He comes back. He's evil, that's why you can't... Well, fuck, if that's why... If being evil makes you invincible, then Hitler shouldn't have had to shot himself in a bunker. Osama bin Laden is probably still wandering around the desert or floating around, the, walking around on the ocean floor like Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's 2 with a big hole in his head because he was just so evil. That is a shitty excuse for bad writing. There's a lot of shit that happens in this movie that is so... It's mildly uninteresting. So... Now, once again, I don't, I don't hate these movies. I've always been sort of lukewarm on them. I think as they go on, the, the series does get progressively worse. But that's also because they, they all keep trying to have... Every movie in the Halloween series tries to have this same creepy tone. And it really just resorts in the movie being boring because it's a movie that by part five, you should have kind of a sense of humor about, but it's still trying to be scary. And it's not. And it, by 1988, by the time they did uh, Halloween Return of Michael Myers... He was pretty much just a Jason knockoff. Now, and, and you know, I know people say, well, Michael Myers came first. Yeah, but, yeah, in this movie. But then in 1980 and 1981, they did Friday the 13th and Friday the 13th 2. And Halloween 2, of course, came out in 1981, so... Then they moved on. They were trying to do something else with this series and have, you know, different, um, that's what they call an anthology series, just different films about Halloween. And they did Season of the Witch, and of course it bombed because it didn't have Michael Myers in it. Had nothing to do with the other movies. And even though it was really the best one as far as the ho anything under the Halloween title, it was it, interesting to say the least. But by 1988, there was seven Friday the 13th movies. And by that point, they're just kind of aping that formula. It's just a big guy who's going to kill people with whatever thing he can get his hands on. So, once again, why this movie is regarded as being such a great masterpiece, I don't, I don't get it's an underwritten character with... Alright, now let's start on Dr. Loomis. Because this is an... I don't know if I can go an hour and a half talking about this. By myself, anyway. Um, what are we, 20 minutes in? 19? Something like that. Alright, so we're... Uh... Alright, Loomis coincidentally is using a payphone... Where Michael My next to a spot where Michael Myers just killed a guy. Of course, he doesn't see the body, he just sees the... I wonder why Michael Myers killed this dude and didn't bother to take his truck. That You'd think you'd want to ditch that car. I mean, he's smart enough to know how to drive the damn car. I think he would know that somebody might be looking for it. Alright, now of course he finds... The Rabbit in Red Lounge Matchbook. By the way, this is why Rob Zombie was brilliant in his remake. He took that matchbook and made it like an actual place. Uh, and of course we see that Michael Myers has killed Freddie Mercury. Anyway, um... He took The Rabbit in Red and he made it a 
real location. Which is brilliant if you're doing a remit. Now, of course, you know, Ooh, mom's a stripper. Fuck off. Who said that these were not white trash people? Apparently, they're not smart enough to do anything when they see their kid holding a bloody knife other than stand there. And like I said, one bitch even puts her hands in her pockets. All right, now here we are with, uh, we're meeting PJ Soul's character, uh, Linda, I believe, who speaks only in totalies. You totally never showed. Uh, sp another, speaking of another horror movie, uh, way better than Halloween, PJ Souls also, uh, in Carrie, one of the, uh, one of the bullies in Carrie, again, better horror movie than this one, if for nothing else, because having to sit and watch Carrie White's awful life is, that's a horror all in itself. Okay, now you have this line that's making me think about Nancy Loomis taking a shit. Thank you. That is more lowbrow than anything anybody said in the Rob Zombie movie, by the way. Did he hear that? Um, anyway, the three most boring teenagers on planet fucking Earth right here. John Carpenter really does not know how to write. Well, maybe Rob Zombie doesn't either, but, you know, at least with them being trashy and disgusting, they were at least kind of interesting. This is, I don't have my chemistry book. And I totally, totally... Totally. Totally. Shut the fuck up. Alright, so now they're making plans to babysit. We're in the very most uninteresting parts of this movie. I really wish I had somebody else here. This would be great if Rob was here, but if every time I've ever brought up the idea of doing the podcast uh, commentary thing, he's always been like... Rrr. The ADR in this movie, like, you could tell that the dubbing in this movie, like, the audio dubbing, is, and was, had to be synced up with the video. Okay, once again, long, more long, long, terrifying shots of these three girls walking and doing nothing. See, like, and I hate to keep bringing it up, but by this point in Black Christmas, we're already looking at the girl with the bag on her head sitting in the window, which is one of the creepiest images I've ever seen in a movie. <clears throat> but Michael Myers is uh, standing in a bush. He's in that car way back there. Or, no, wait. No, he's gotten out of the car now, and he's walked ahead of... The, yeah, there he is. He's standing in the... Michael Myers is standing in the bush! Oh, no! And I, I would overlook a lot of this if the series ever did anything to explain anything. Like, part two is where you'd probably want to start dropping some explanations, and then they what they come up with is that Laurie Strode is his sister. And it's like, that's, that's all the story you're advancing here? This guy just can't figure out why this is everybody's favorite horror movie. Even in the climax, it's not... It's not, like I said, it's not awful. And this is me watching the movie and comparing it to every other horror movie made. Uh, and I could just keep it in the deck. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, infinitely more interesting than this. Mostly because the killers are interesting. Like, Michael Myers is just not an interesting character. Okay, so <clears throat> Michael Myers kills his sister when he's six. He spends 15 years in the sanitarium, and then he escapes to stab a couple of babysitters. But he's the ultimate evil. Keep in mind, this is two years removed from The Omen, a movie that was literally about a kid who was going to grow up to be the Antichrist. 
and, you know, bring about the end of the world and all that shit. But this principle of evil made flesh just wants to stab some babysitters. All right, now we're getting into a weird continuity error in this movie. We're meeting Sheriff Brackett, who, of course, uh, played by Charles Cyphers. He's uh, Annie's father. Now, right now, he should be somewhere else. But he's jump-scaring Jamie Lee Curtis. Once again, it's a brilliant movie. Everyone hates jump scares. This movie's full of them. Pointless ones like the one we just seen. And I guess I'll get to that in a second, where he's supposed to be right now, and isn't. <laughs> Shit, I always forget about this sequence where we have to go back to Lori's house and listen to her talk on the phone and see Michael Myers standing in her backyard... Here's a line I can't figure out why is in this movie. Uh, she's about to say it right now. Well, kiddo, I thought you outgrew superstition. Why does she say that? What is she talking about? She just saw some trick-or-treaters and went, Well, kiddo, I thought you outgrew superstition. What? Any scene where somebody's talking to themselves is not a good one. Um, <clears throat> right, so now she's throwing her books down. And there's Michael Myers, standing in the yard. And now he's not standing in the yard. Did she watch him walk away? What? I mean, like, look, cinematically, creepy shot, okay, you see him standing there, then you cut back to her, then you cut away, and he's gone. But she had to actually watch him turn around and walk away. Like, she has a poster of James Enser on her wall. The fuck is that? By the way, like, the only poster she has on her wall. She has a poster, a globe. Who had a globe? What person had a globe? And she has a sun, one of those ridiculous sun hats. I guess people actually had those at one point, but... Come on. A teenager has a globe in their bedroom. All right, so let's get back to Dr. Loomis for a second, because um, Dr. Loomis <clears throat> in this movie, as compared to the, 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 the Rob Zombie one, and that's, that's my big thing with why I like the Rob Zombie one better more than this one, just because I've always wanted to see what is it that Loomis did to help Michael Myers. And this is evidently the shortened version. There's a longer version of this movie that was made for TV, I think in 1980, where they actually, and it was to extend the runtime so that it would fit in the time slot. From what I understand, that's why they did it. They actually went back and filmed additional scenes for the movie and one of which is Dr. Loomis in a room full of, um, in this big, ridiculous, like, it looks like a room from a Stanley Kubrick film. Just this big, empty room with a couple of uh, suits are sitting in there. And he's talking about Michael Myers, and they're saying that, like, come on, Sam, he hasn't even moved in five years. And he's trying to convince them that Michael Myers is this supreme evil and all that shit, and they're not buying it, as no one would. And then he goes into the room with uh, Michael Myers, who's just sitting there staring out the window, quiet. And he says, you fooled them, Michael, but you didn't fool me. And it's like, fool him how? He doesn't talk. All right, now, of course, you see them smoking a joint in the car. Anyway, he doesn't talk. Like, all you ever see of the this relationship with between Loomis and Michael Myers is Loomis being the worst child psychiatrist in the history of the profession uh, next to a guy that would just shake a chicken over him 
and go, oh, blah, 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 oh, blah, 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 blah. Like, he might as well be that bad. I mean, if, if you were, if, if Michael Myers was your kid, and you turned him over to a uh, child psychiatrist, and his diagnosis that he came back with was, he's evil, and he go, why do you get that? I looked in his eyes. You not only would fire that guy, you would sue him for malpractice. He's a shitty psychiatrist. I've always liked this scene just because I want to hear the end of the story. Halloween 1 and 2 both do this thing. Uh, in this one, it's this story about this guy that he, he went into, he said goodnight to his kids, and then he got a hacksaw. And then no, they never finished that story. What, what the hell was the end of the story? Okay, anyway. In Halloween 2, it's the kid with a razor blade in his mouth. Uh, and I never noticed what it was until like, I saw the, the cleaned-up, high-definition version. Of the, there's a scene in the second one where the woman is... Damn, I wish I had some of that right now. Um, <clears throat> the, the kid's walking into the, <clears throat> the emergency room, and he's got a big razor blade sticking out of his gums. And I'm like, there's a dude putting razor blades in candy, and I gotta watch another fucking Michael Myers movie? Also, getting to this, I guess Michael Myers is so evil he can pick up a gravestone and just walk out of a cemetery with it. Are they smoking out of a yellow paper? That is the weirdest looking joint. What did she do? Like, rip out a page out of a novel and roll the weed in it? I'm just thinking about how much I wish I had some weed. Okay, now here, here's what I was talking about <clears throat> right now, or a minute ago anyway, with Sheriff Brackett should probably be somewhere else. Okay, this store got robbed forever ago. Michael Myers has robbed this store and he stole a rope, some knives, and a Halloween mask. Which he writes off as being kids. He took a couple of knives, a rope, and a Halloween mask. He's been wearing this mask all day because he's been stalking Lori all day, which means this burglar alarm has been ringing all fucking morning. Where has Sheriff Brackett been this entire time? Everybody on the street has had to listen to that obnoxious racket while the sheriff was fucking off and talking to Lori. Okay, now Dr. Loomis is about to come up and tell him there's a serial killer in town, and for some reason they never put together, hey, a guy came in and took some rope, a Halloween mask, and some knives. Hmm. Damn kids. And Michael Myers is, of course, watching him in the background. See him driving away in the car. And that, that was a really smart thing. Um, and once again, like, like I said, I keep saying it over and over again. I don't hate this movie. I just don't see, I just don't think it's great. I think it kind of levels off at being, eh, okay. It has a great soundtrack, and a, it, Donald Pleasance is enjoyable in this movie, but he ain't that fucking good. Uh, let's see, 33 minutes in. Jaws has already eaten two people, and we've learned a lot about sharks. Nothing has happened in 30 minutes worth of movie here that is relevant. By the way, you could have skipped this whole thing with him uh, breaking into the... Uh... Also, here's another thing. In the Rob Zombie's Halloween, it's comparatively to, compared to this one, why is he stealing that gravestone in this movie? In, in the remake, it makes sense that he took the gravestone because he's using that to try to non-verbally tell Laurie Strode who he is and what their relationship is, and it's like his last attempt to reach out to another human being. What is the purpose of it in this movie? Well, since Michael Myers never says anything, you'll never know. But he didn't have to say anything in the other movie for me to figure out what the hell he was doing. In this one, there's... No answers, nothing, and it's not, well, like I said, it's not mystery, it's just not writing the fucking story. 
And like, like I said, and look, old movies, like I said, especially back in the day, they, um, they never planned for sequels. Like, it was a thing, they'd make the movie, and they go, ah, if it does good, maybe we'll do a sequel. Or, which is actually more common, well, we did the movie, I'm done with it, fuck sequels. And then the the studio would come along and say, hey, we're going to throw a ton of money at you to make this sequel. And they go, all right, fuck it, I'll lower my standards and make a sequel. And Michael Myers is going to stand by this tree now, because that's terrifying. Uh, a like I said, Alien. I get it. Phantasm. I get it. Halloween. I don't get it. Like, whoop. Like, like, Phantasm, for instance. I've seen Phantasm, like, I don't know, about three or four times. I have no idea what the hell's going on in it. But I know there's enough going on that I could sink my teeth. I can't really get into Phantasm that much either, but there's something to sink your teeth into with Phantasm. Not a lot in this movie to really get that obsessed over, at least not enough for every fucking filmmaker to say it's their favorite goddamn horror movie. All right, so now they're up at the house. <clears throat> and like I said, I think this is just because people just say that because... They're supposed to. The same reason, like, every time anybody talks about Andy Kaufman, they're always like, oh, he was a genius. There was just nobody on Andy Kaufman's level. All right, let's get fucking real here. Andy Kaufman went on stage. This was one of his bits. He just went on stage and ate a bowl of ice cream. That's funny in theory. That's funny when you go, you know, there was a comic that sat on a stage and ate a bowl of ice cream. It's funny the idea that he would do that, or that a comic would do that, but if you you went to pay to see a comedy show and all you got was some dickhead sitting on the stage eating ice cream, you'd be fucking pissed. You'd be like, this guy sucks. This isn't a man. That's basically the only function Loomis has in this movie, is to walk around and hype up how evil Michael Myers is. This isn't a man. He isn't human. I shot him six times! He isn't a man! Once again, I think this is why Michael Myers probably grew up to be even more fucked up, because you're a terrible fucking psychiatrist. Anyway, I sound like I'm mad at this movie, I'm really not. Um, but yeah, that's a thing that people do, is once like they've heard an opinion enough times, they seem to adopt it and think that that, oh yeah, well I'm supposed to think that Halloween is the greatest horror, it's a, it's a masterpiece. It is not even the best John Carpenter movie. Really, The Thing is the best John Carpenter movie. But John Carpenter's done a lot of great movies that get no credit because they live in the shadow of this fucking thing. The Thing. Fantastic movie. Once again, I've seen The Thing analyzed and overanalyzed. People pick out shit in The Thing, and I've seen The Thing like a hundred times. I always kind of felt like at the end, the thing kind of fell apart a little bit for that last confrontation. But I've seen enough people now dissect it to where it's like, okay, well now everything in it makes sense. Uh, it never even occurred to me that Childs might be a thing. Like, I, I just thought it was these two guys. It's like, alright, well the last two left, we're just going to sit here and freeze now. And it was sort of up in the air that he might be a thing, he might not be a thing, but now it's been answered for me, he was a thing. Uh, in the Mouth of Madness, this is a great monologue, by the way. Uh, in the emotionless face, the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. Um, that is a great, that right there is a great monologue. So, that opening scene, which is questionable in some parts, and this monologue, which, by the way, this monologue is where Dr. Loomis explains he's not a very good child psychiatrist. For some reason, he does not want an APB put out on Michael Myers even though he's driving a car 
that you should be able to easily identify because it's a Smith's Grove mental institution car. And here's Lori being boring again. Alright, so for me, I would say what is what is the worst Halloween movie? Definitely for me, it's H2O. A lot of people would say it's Resurrection, but H2O sort of paved the path for Resurrection to exist and to be as shitty as it was. So I kind of have to say that H2O is the worst one. Plus, there's this whole weird thing that they do in H2O where there's a scene where you see Scream 2 on the TV. And that's probably because Kevin Williamson uh, did a pass on the, the script, or he's one of the authors of the, the H2O script. I don't want to give him full credit for it because... Uh, I don't think he was the only writer, but more than that, it's also a Dimension movie. Scream 2 is a Dimension movie, but what really fucks me up about that is that in Scream 1, there's this whole sequence of them watching this movie. And if... How does Scream 2 exist as a movie in the Halloween universe... When they were watching Halloween... What the fuck were they watching? So if I go into eight... The whole universe should just implode in on this movie. Because... How are they watching Halloween 1 in the first film if Halloween 1 actually happened in the reality of H2O? Did somebody make Halloween the movie after this occurrence? And then they made Scream? Like, that makes no fucking sense. That don't make no sense. Um... And here's Michael Myers, once again, standing in the goddamn bushes. What is this kid wearing? What is this kid's outfit? Is he an astronaut? Is he a cowboy? Is he a cowboy astronaut? Is he a space cowboy? What is this outfit he's wearing? And Michael Myers, they also refer to commonly in this film as the boogeyman... Doesn't really do boogeyman-y things, but... <sighs> Fuck it. Halloween. Okay, now here's another shot of Michael Myers standing outside of a window. Fuck this plant. Um... Annie, turn around. Uh, Annie is by far the most interesting character in this movie as far as watchability goes. I think that's because John Carpenter actually gave her stuff to do in this script, aside from just sitting around being boring. Why did Michael Myers break that plant? Like, what did that plant do to him? Alright, so we're 43 minutes into this movie. We've seen the monologue, Annie smoke a joint, and Michael Myers stand in a bush, stand in this bush, stands in that bush, and drives around. Best horror movie ever! This is such bad teenage girl writing, too. I've never known anybody that talked like this. That dog is so dead. Alright, so Michael Myers killed a dog. Finally, something happened. One thing I think is interesting here is they imply that he eats dogs. Like, they said they found that there's a dog, they find a dog in the house when Loomis and Brackett are walking around the house and uh, Loomis just goes, he got hungry. Which I guess makes sense. It's not like Michael Myers would, you know, be able to, you know, pull into a McDonald's and get a burger. And look, they're watching the movie that John Carpenter would later go on to remake into a, a classic movie. The Thing from Another World is another movie where the remake is a hundred times better than the original, except people actually acknowledge it. 
that the thing from another world is a movie where nothing happens and it's a little bit interesting when you're waiting on something to happen and they're like dissecting the body and they're talking about how it's made out of chlorophyll and it's 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 got more uh commonality with play, but it never morphs into anybody it's it's like this bad Frankenstein knockoff monster. It just wakes up and goes, Grrr! and they shoot it with like this electrical arc thing. Okay, so Tommy's an astronaut. I guess that's what that's supposed to be. I also like this scene where uh, Lori is going through his comic books and it's like Tarantula Man, Nuclear Man. Laser Man, because that really does just sum up comic book superheroes. It's something man. Name any object and stick the word man behind it, and you have every superhero. It's Razor Man and Nuclear Man. <clears throat> now we're going to watch Annie do some laundry, because that's really exciting. Hour into this movie, Michael Myers has killed a dog. I can see a lot of these things, and this is my thing when people talk about suspense. Suspense only works once, unless it they, unless the movie is just really amazing. If you know where Annie's gonna die, every scene of Michael Myers watching her through a window, it feels like it's wasting time. Because once you take away, once you get over the fact that Michael Myers is not going to kill her in this scene, you're just watching a chick do laundry. I would comment on something going on in this scene, but it's just this chick watching. It's this little kid watching TV. I don't want to call her a chick. I think she'd be considered a... Well, I think she's past her chick stage. I think this girl's probably in the old lady stage. made Clorox 2 in the 70s. That's pretty amazing. I remember Clorox 2, like, there was Clorox 2 with colors. They did something besides bleach your clothes and brighten your colors. I didn't know they made that shit in 1978. That's pretty, pretty interesting. As you can tell, at this point, I am, I think I may have exhausted all of my thoughts on this movie and might just be probing... Michael Myers kill her right then. What is he waiting on? Like, what is he doing all this time? Once again, since you know nothing about what goes on in this killer's head, which, like I said, you only get so much leeway with that before you have to go, all right, why? He's evil! That's, once again, that's the only answer you're given. Not a good one. Uh, I think the Rob Zombie one was better just because this character was approached from a more clinical and psychiatric sort of viewpoint as opposed to he's just evil like it's such an outdated idea even in 1978 which and what they're what they're doing is they're saying that uh Michael Myers is so evil that this man of science is now running around talking like the preacher from the omen like, that's how evil he is. This this very fact-based guy who believes in medicine and clinical diagnosis has resorted to evil because it's the only way to explain this guy. But if you got a guy who doesn't talk, who doesn't do anything but stare at a wall, where do you come up with evil? How does that end up in your diagnosis? dialogue is absolutely horrible. 
I'm not, I'm wearing a shirt, perv. Is that all you ever think about? I think it's all you ever think about. Why wasn't it Nancy Loomis in more movies? Like she's in this one... Uh, she's a dead body in Halloween 2, and then she's in the fog, and then I, I think that's it. I think of many movies. She's actually pretty good in this. She's the best one in this movie. As far as the teenagers go, anyway. Now what she's going to do is pawn this kid off on Lori so she can go fuck her boyfriend. Well, actually, she's going to go get killed by Michael Myers, but... I guess Michael Myers was taking a shit right there or something. <clears throat> How does no one see this dude? This is where the Ben Tramer conversation takes place. I think it's also worth noting that none of these girls actually look like teenagers. Maybe the maybe Linda does. But Ben Tramer, if you're familiar with the series, gets killed in this ridiculous Final Destination accident in the second one. I guess he was supposed to show up here and then decided not to. Maybe he had a premonition or something that Michael Myers was going to kill him. So he said, fuck that, got drunk, and then got hit by a car. That explain like it really is the most final destination type act. He gets hit by a car, which rams into a van and just blows up into flames. And it's so out of nowhere. There's also another dude, uh, Lance Guest's character in Halloween Two, slips on a puddle of blood, and it's one of the funniest scenes ever. Halloween Two, much better than this one, by the way. All right, it is officially getting so cold in this room I can see my breath. I'm turning my space heater on. So if you hear a hum in the background, don't. Uh, here's why Nancy Loomis is so good in this movie. is because she always seems to be good at finding something for her character to be doing whether it's just singing this dumb song, whistling. And this is why I say that, you know, even though she looks 35 in this movie, uh, she's one of the best actors in it. But it's also kind of a bummer that she never did much else. At least not that I know of. I got a lot of damn horror movies. Like I said, I've only seen her in like three other th two other things, really. And this is much better than just walking around talking to yourself. Definitely makes more sense than saying... Okay, if you notice, she just... The door was locked a second ago. I think she just put that together. It was locked a second ago. Now, how did Michael Myers get in if he didn't have the damn keys? Once again, I guess he's so evil that locks just open for him. Alright, so now Michael Myers is in the process of killing the uh, only real interesting character out of these three. She's the one he has laying under the gravestone for no reason. Oh yeah, back to this whole thing with him carrying the gravestone out. Uh, a lot of people criticize the, the remake Michael Myers just because he's so gigantic. But in both movies, there is a plot device where he has to carry a fucking gravestone. Now, I, I, now a, a gravestone, for any of you that never been near one of these things, they are so heavy that even the big-ass Tyler Main Michael Myers couldn't realistically pick this thing up. But this one right here damn sure couldn't. And I guess maybe he stole a rope to assist him, and even with a rope, I don't know what you would do with it other than tie it to the back of that car and drag it to wherever you want to go, but I would imagine that, you know, that car 
dragging a gravestone would be uh, a little conspicuous, because I don't think Michael Myers is smart enough to care about that. Tommy, of course, is very freaked out by uh, Michael Myers. He should be more freaked out by the fact that he's going to be played horribly by Paul Rudd in four more movies. People say The Curse of Michael Myers sucks. I actually didn't think that one was that bad. Uh, as far as, like... No, as far as Halloween movies that creeped me out, Curse of Michael Myers... Before I saw any of the Halloween movies, I saw the trailer for The Curse of Michael Myers. That was a really intimidating trailer, because that was where the music, the dun, 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 and you see him come out of that, uh, I guess it's like a basement or something, but you, you see him walking out, and it's like, the night when evil roamed the streets. The, the, I remember that trailer being really intimidating, but now the movie is, it's hit or miss, but it's, all, it's regarded as being one of the bad ones, but tonally, Curse of Michael Myers is dreary. And it's just, it's brutal. And, like, the atmosphere of that movie is just so unpleasant and so creepy that I can say that that one is probably, I think, one of the better ones. Part 5 might be one of the shittier ones, but at least... In part five, you get a... Uh, let me take a drink. Um, you get some semblance in um, part five that Michael Myers might have a soul. And it's the scene where um, Daniel Hare, where he takes off his mask one of the few times in the series when the mask comes off. And even though he's been set on fire, he's not... Uh, burnt at all for some reason but um, you know Jamie or yeah Jamie Lloyd looks at him and she goes she calls him uncle and you see like the tear coming out of his eye and then they add that whole thing in the next movie about that he's he's sort of like a Manchurian candidate that he's a thing that activates within a kid or a person whatever and they sever an entire bloodline out of the human race to sacrifice to some kind of Halloween god or some shit. It's ridiculous, but at least they're making an attempt to explain why this fucking guy cannot be killed. <coughs> More fancy talk. So anyway, <clears throat> now that was interesting because it kind of gives you the uh, the impression that Michael Myers is still a six-year-old boy trapped in this body that while he can't move or speak, his body goes around doing these horrible and unspeakable things and he can't make it stop. Like, he's, he's in there observing, getting shot, getting stabbed, probably feeling all that pain, but can't do anything about it. To me, that was, that was interesting. And the rest of Halloween 5, not that great, but uh, Halloween 4 has a couple of scenes in it that are good. Uh, the intro, where it's just quiet and you're looking at the farm, that's really good. That traveling preacher guy is interesting. And then the ending where Jamie Lloyd stabs her mother in the tub and it's like, ah, oh, the evil's being passed on to her now. That would have been... A, it just opened an avenue to make a more interesting movie than Halloween 5 turned out to be. But it took five movies to make Michael Myers mildly interesting and by that point the movies were shit, so... I also didn't like in the, those movies the way they bulked him up and made him... Look like a damn football player or some shit. 
but it's not like a believable bulking up. It just looks like somebody took the stunt guy and then padded his suit to make his chest bow out. And then the mask in that, that particular movie is also awful. Alright, so now we're at the scene with Linda and Bob. And now Jamie Lee Curtis and the kids are... There, they just carved the most generic looking pumpkin. Maybe in the 70s, they didn't get that creative with their pumpkins, but... I feel like I missed that Ben Tramer dialogue a minute ago. Maybe I was talking over it. I wish I had more to say. I feel like I'm kind of talking in circles at this point. Every time I hit a s dead space. But there's a lot of dead space in this movie. Of just people sitting around doing stuff. Or standing in bushes. Or driving, whatever. Alright, now Linda's totally talking to Lori on the phone. And she's totally going to go fuck her boyfriend. And then she's going to totally get killed. And Annie is totally not here. But this is everybody's favorite horror movie. I just I don't get it. Like, what? Oh, she said definitely, not totally. That was a change of dialogue. I've seen this... For somebody that's complaining about this movie a lot, I, keep in mind, I have seen it, like, probably close to 30 times. You know, I'm sitting here bitching about, like, every moment of it. <laughs> But, uh, back to what I was saying earlier, uh, so many more interesting movies, like, I would put this towards, maybe not at the very bottom of the John Carpenter filmography, but it's close. Like, it might be a step above Village of the Damned and Ghost of Mars. But, like, in terms of, like I said, The Thing... Uh, Prince of Darkness is a fantastic John Carpenter movie. Nobody ever talks about it. In the Mouth of Madness. Creepy as shit. Weird. Another great John Carpenter movie that just kind of falls by the wayside so everyone can suck this movie's dick. It's like it's like saying Metallica's best album was Kill Em All. It's like they've never done anything better than Seek and Destroy. It's like, the fuck are you talking about? Are you seeing Justice for All? Or hearing Justice for All, rather? And Justice for All is an Al Pacino movie. Um, <clears throat> that was the hidden track on that album. That was the, you're out of order and you're out of order. All right, so now, Michael, they're, they're fucking. Why are sex scenes in movies, especially from this era? That was quick. Nobody's a good fuck in this movie. Everyone's just kind of too pump Pete here. Although I think Linda might be a little more satisfied than Michael's sister was. So now we're almost at the moment where uh, Michael Myers is going to stick this dude to the wall. He's going to stay. This is the strongest drywall. Whoever manufactures the sheetrock that built this house really deserves some kudos. That, like, that should be in the ad. This sheetrock is strong enough to support 150 pounds of dead weight with nothing but a butcher knife. So much sitting around waiting in this damn movie. 
Uh, Christine's another great John Carpenter movie that um, I think it's Stephen King gets more credit for that than uh, okay wait a minute I was wrong Michael Myers hangs a 150 pound body off of wood all right, so now we're, Michael Myers is actually doing stuff. I have to admit, this is kind of cool, where he sticks the guy to the wall. If they ever add him to the Mortal Kombat uh, roster, which I'm sure will be in the next Mortal Kombat 11, whatever the fuck they're going to call it. Um, I hope they keep doing that, by the way. Uh, that was one of my favorite things when I found out that... Is that knife even all... How is he stuck to the wall? That knife... How long is that fucking knife? Most of it is still sticking out of Bob right now. And somehow he's stuck to the wall. And Michael Myers is staring at him, confused about the physics as I am, apparently. <laughs> These aren't very violent deaths, by the way. I mean, they seem like it, but... Okay, like... <clears throat> I also hate when people say that Rob Zombie's uh, Halloween remake isn't scary. Because the devices of fright... Uh, if th that makes any sense... That the two utilize, they're very different. Uh, Carpenter, like I said, very good at directing a scene... Not the greatest at directing actors, necessarily. Like, if you give John Carpenter, Kurt Russell, and Keith David, and um, Daniel Moffat, and, you know, you give them that crew from the... You, you get the thing. You get a movie that it, is perfectly solid. But if you give him Roddy Piper and Meg Foster, you get a movie that could have been a lot better... You get a movie that's an 8 where it should have been a 10. And PJ Souls has some really nice tits. Or had some really nice tits. They're definitely not the same tits they were in 1978. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, he strangles her with a phone cord. And once again, like people also say like Rob Zombie took this movie and made it sleazy. But please keep in mind... This is a movie about a mental patient who murders naked girls. It was always a sleaze movie from 1978 up. So he didn't really sleaze it up anymore. He just had people use language that people talk in. I mean, it wasn't as compelling of a conversation as... Totally forgot my books. I totally don't like chemistry. So Lori still hasn't figured out something's uh, a little askew, even though she just heard somebody get strangled. Of course, I guess you'd want to call back for confirmation before you called the police, but... <clears throat> so in this movie, Lori Strode is not necessarily Michael Myers' other sister, as she is just some random chick. The sister thing is added in the sequel... Uh, I believe a bottle of Jack Daniels was credited for that decision. And now we're back at the Myers house. Um, I'm going to say um too many times because I know that sounds like I'm struggling for things to say. And at this point, I kind of feel like I am. And now Loomis is just standing in the bushes. Prince of Darkness, uh, getting back to that one, because that's another one with Donald Pleasance, where he plays basically the same character as he does in this, except in that one he's a preacher. And the convert and what they're talking about is interesting. 
he's just now found this damn car. Maybe if he hadn't spent all that time in the damn bushes, Michael Myers' old house, he might have seen it earlier. And every time uh, something kind of remotely happens, we get the, the Halloween theme queuing up here. And once again, like the more I watch this movie, the more I'm, I'm just dying from wondering why the hell Jamie Lee Curtis is considered so great in this film. I mean, and don't get me wrong, she's okay. And this is, this is you know, after, I mean, it is her first, you know, film. So, I mean, she's okay. I've seen her way better in other things. Like, she's much better in True Lies. This one just, especially in Halloween 2, she really doesn't do anything but lay in a bed and whimper and crawl away. So why she's held up as this uh, strong woman of horror figure, I'll never figure out. She's not the hero. Loomis is the hero of the movie. So, But like when you look at a character like Nancy from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, she has so much more as a character to do and to contend with. She's got this guy trying to kill her in her dreams. Her parents don't believe her. Uh, everybody's trying to put a clinical diagnosis to what's going on. Nobody's listening to her. Uh, she has to deal with her mom as a drunk. Her parents are divorced. Like, there's a lot going on with that character. And with Lori, she's a blank slate. She's just here to wander from scene to scene until Michael Myers is ready to chase her. Uh, Ripley from... Alien. Once again, I'm going back to Alien, but that's another one where it's like that is a much be uh, better in terms of strong, empowered females in, uh, in horror, which I hate the term empowered because I think it's a bullshit term. Uh, it's something for liberals to criticize or praise a movie over. Uh, women aren't empowered enough. Women are... This movie's great because it empower... It's just... I think it's just kind of a bullshit. How does a movie empower anybody for anything? But even still, Ripley... Much more compelling character. Much better acted. Once again, has a lot more as a character to contend with in, in her movie... Lori Strode babysits for a little while and gets chased for 10 minutes by Michael Myers. And granted, she does poke him in the eyeball with a, uh, with a clothes hanger at one point, which, by the way, does not do anything to hurt his eye. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I haven't seen this in HD, which is I'm watching a Blu-ray uh, Blu -ray, uh, rip of it. The copy I have is on VHS, which means it's so dark you can barely see shit. Sometimes that's good. I don't really want to see all the bolts that are holding Pumpkinhead together. I find that HD ruins a lot of movies. So far, this really hasn't been one of them. A lot of old movies, anyway. Like, it really... Anything that is fake-looking, it's like, I don't, I don't want to see the Made in Taiwan tag on the fucking alien when it's attacking people. So just leave the shadows if you can. You light up too much, everything looks fake. Which is the uh, kind of the downfall of low-budget movies that are made today. Like when you watch a movie like, I don't know, let's just say Thanks Killing, for example... Everything is so bright and so high def that I can... I, I think you would be able to tell anyway. But I'm way too aware that that thing is a puppet. But, like, if you look at an older, um, you know, like, 90s era low-budget film, they just look like they were made in the 80s. Um, a good example I can think of is a movie called Rumpelstiltskin which is, uh, it's sort of Leprechaun-ish in the sense that it was made by the guy that, uh, made Leprechaun. But, uh, it's also, you know, a little impy guy, comes from a completely different time, and now he's in, uh, modern-day, uh, L.A., and he's trying to steal a baby. And the movie was made in 1995, but it looks like it was made in, like, 1988. Like, that's the film quality. It just looks a little older, a little darker, 
But if you make it, but now low budget movies, they're all shot digitally and high def. So anything in it that's fake or doesn't look right really shoots out in your face and looks fake. So my advice, if you're going to take any from me, if you're a low budget filmmaker, add some grain to your shit, man. Um, shoot on film if you have to, even though I know it's like a hundred times more expensive. But no horror movie looks good in HD when it's really low budget. Somebody rips out guts and it, it just... It's like, fuck, I can tell that is pantyhose with shit stuffed in it because the, the camera is catching absolutely every fake thing on screen. Okay. Now here we are with the... Uh, Judith Myers headstone which apparently weighs 10 pounds because Michael Myers was able to carry it out of the graveyard this is a pretty frightening scene and I guess this is what people say about it is that Michael Myers sets up a haunted house but why would he know how to do that if he's been in lockup since he was 6 Alright, so now we're at the climax of the movie, and Jamie Lee Curtis is running around whimpering, which I guess is what all of us would do in this situation. Uh, I believe I would be out of this fucking house by now, though, even if I had to jump out the damn window. I find dead bodies in a house. I'm going for the nearest exit. Michael Myers suddenly became very bad aim with that knife, because now he just hits her in the shoulder, knocks her down the stairs. Really, that should have been enough. I think if she was any of these other characters that fall down the stairs would have killed her. All right, so climax time. Michael Myers is going to very slowly chase Lori Strode across the street. All right, now we're 117 minutes into the movie. Getting close to the end. I'm sure anybody that's been sticking with this uh, commentary this long is grateful we're at this point. I never noticed he blocked the door with a rake. Once again, that's uh, the benefits of HD. It doesn't make the movie better, but it is a thing I've noticed around the 108th time I've watched this thing. I've also had people tell me, like, uh, this is an argument I got into uh, over a decade ago with somebody uh, over... It was right around the time, it was when I bought, I found a VHS copy of Jason Lives. And I was really excited. And then, of course, somebody uh, I was hanging around with at the time had to completely deflate that balloon by going, eh, yeah, Friday the 13th is always really stupid. Halloween is better. Which, even pre-Rob Zombie's Halloween, that pissed me off because... I had seen this movie about 20 times at that point, still trying to figure out why everybody loved it. But the, the only explanation anybody's ever given as to why this movie was so spectacular, or why Michael Myers was scared, is like, because Michael Myers had an agenda. And you're like, which was what? He never speaks. Like I said, he's trying to stab a babysitter. We're going to pause for a minute because uh, the H, my card is running out. All right, so I got that fixed. Um, now I have 35 minutes to go through the rest of this movie. All right, so where are we? Okay, Lori Strode is running back to the house. Uh, what the hell was I talking about before? She can't find her keys. Okay. Uh, Michael Myers slowly walks towards her. Fuck, I completely... I might have ran out of steam here. But then again, this movie, it's like trying to review porn or do a commentary on uh, porn. It's like, the dick goes in, the dick goes out. The dick goes in, the dick goes out. Uh, and this is kind of the same. Okay, Michael Myers is walking. Lori Strode is right there. Michael Myers is way the fuck over there. <laughs> He's in a bush, he's out of a bush, he's in the bush, he's out of the bush. I 
I love how this kid is responding to the urgency. And how does Michael Myers know to disconnect the phone? Once again, he's six years old, trapped in a 21-year-old's body. How in the hell does he know, I better disconnect the phone or she'll call the police? Like, what reference point does he have to know that that would be the thing to do? Or even know what wires to cut would be, uh... That's another good question. Alright, now here's... Alright, she stuck him in the neck with a sewing needle. This would pretty much take down, uh... Now she stabbed him in the neck, somehow managing to miss his spinal cord, his jugular vein, and his esophagus. But then again, he's so evil, that doesn't matter. Even if she chopped off his head, he'd still be coming up the stairs to get her. Alright, so this is the first Michael Myers fake-out death. You know, one thing about the 70s, just thinking about this from just getting the last uh, hour or so worth of uh, stuff off of this camera that I'm using, is, uh, you know what somebody never thought of in the 70s that would be a modern day inconvenience? Where is that goddamn, that we'd all have to carry around these foot long cords everywhere we go to keep our electronic shit from dying. Uh, I spent about 30 minutes walking around the house looking for a USB cord that I was pretty sure was in my car, but it's way too damn cold to be hanging out outside digging around my, uh, digging around my car looking for this damn cord that doesn't seem to be there. I'm out of patience for looking for it at the house. Or uh, in the house, I should say. So, <clears throat> I had to plug the camera into the computer, which is uh, a pain in the ass. Believe me, nothing to comment on, really, even though we're in the climax. Like I said, dick goes in, dick goes out, dick goes in, dick goes out. Uh, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but I guess I had to figure out how to get it, which you wouldn't think would be a pain, as big of a pain in the ass as, uh, as it is to take to plug in the camera and get it, just move it from the camera to the computer. But uh, it took a minute, but I finally figured it out. Okay, so now she's doing what any smart person would do. Hide in the closet. Alright, now here's a weird inconsistency uh, with this movie here is that um, Michael Myers apparently can lift a gravestone. I don't know I've pointed this out a few times. He can lift a gravestone and carry it out of a graveyard and uh, move it around with ease. But he can't open a door that's being tied by a cotton rope. This is holding. This is a guy that moved a gravestone a few minutes ago, but he can't open a door that's being held together with a a fucking robe belt. Where did the kids go again? I forgot what she did with the kids. That's the only noises Michael Myers makes in this movie. And Alright, now here's the Okay, now she just stabbed him in the eyeball with a uh, coat hanger. Of course, when he takes his mask off, we'd never know it. Oh, I forgot about this little bit, too. She does stick him with the knife. Not that it matters. 
Because, I mean, really, he should have blood, like, spraying out of his neck, but evil people don't bleed. Well, like I said, Hitler killed six million people and ended up having to shoot himself in a bunker. But apparently he was not as evil as Michael Myers, who has a body count thus far of, like, five people. Maybe six if you count the dog. This is something I've never understood with uh, a lot of movies. When you take down the bad guy, get the fuck out of the house. Why is she still there? Why are any of them still there? Like, they should be at the front door right now, not just sitting in the... I mean, which I imagine she done fell down some stairs, so I'm pretty sure she's... Maybe doesn't feel like walking, but... Eh, you know what? I got this guy in my house. I can muster up the energy to... to go somewhere else. That's a nice creepy shot when he just... Sits up behind her and then looks over. And now we're at the part where the brave, badass Laurie Strode, the greatest scream queen of all time, is going to get saved by Loomis. You know, they could have added some blood on my. Michael Myers is so evil, he doesn't bleed, apparently, either. But he's not human! He isn't a man! He sounds like Belial. Oh, I guess his eye is a little fucked up. But, uh... He sounds like Belial in a basket case. Like, whenever Belial, like, when they would, like, Dwayne would pick him up, he'd make that noise, like, Alright, so Loomis is now shooting him six fucking times, and it's gonna do nothing. And, uh, that is a really odd balcony, by the way. He didn't have to trip over anything, he just walked straight backwards off of it. Now we get the famous, it was the boogeyman line. It's the only two words these two exchange, I think, in the whole series. Uh, is, it was the boogeyman. Yes, I, I think you're right, it was. Now, of course, we go outside and Michael Myers is missing. Uh, in the sequel, a little bit of inconsistency. I think there was more grass and a completely different house in uh, the beginning of part two. And part two is supposed to pick up right where this one leaves off. All right, and that is the end of Halloween. Jesus Christ. That was, uh... I think this might have been the first time I've watched this in a couple... Or watched it and paid attention. Sometimes I just... One of those movies that I might occasionally just put on. Look at occasionally. Uh, this is a nice ending. Uh, he shoots Michael Myers and suddenly he's gone. But then by the sequel, he doesn't seem to be at all affected by the fact that he's got six bullets, a missing eye... Uh, should be missing a good pint or two of blood from that sewing needle that got stuck in his neck, but whatever, he's evil, so we all know you can't kill something that's evil, even though, you know. Alright, so that's the end of that. Um, end of my commentary. I hope it wasn't uh, terribly boring. I've uh, thought about doing these uh, quite a few times, just taking some random movie and doing like a commentary on it. So I always thought, who the fuck wants to hear me do a commentary on a movie? But it doesn't stop anyone else from doing it. So, uh, that's it. That's my thoughts on uh, Halloween, as many as uh, you can actually have. I still 
uh, do not know why this is everyone's favorite movie. I come back to the... I People just think they're supposed to say that. Best uh, horror movie ever. Uh, no. In the same year that Dawn of the Dead came out, this came out. And, uh... Like I said, it doesn't even really hold its own all that much with, uh... Movies from its own decade. So, I don't know how people can consider this better than Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, better than Hellraiser. I, uh... So, uh... <clears throat> that's all for, uh, this commentary. I don't really know how to coast this to a landing because I haven't come to any conclusions that I didn't have uh, the first time. I guess when you're trying to narrate the movie it's a bit of a tough sit, but <coughs> this isn't one I can definitely, I, I really can't see this being anyone's favorite horror movie. Like I said unless it was the first one you ever saw and those tend to stick with you. But uh uh, that's Halloween. It's good-ish. It, it's just sort of... It's good, not great. I feel like I, I kind of want to knock it off its pedestal a little. Just for the reason of... Um, people can ruin movies. Like, I don't, I don't feel about this the way I do. So, like, I hate Star Wars. I'm one of the few people my age that do. And I've never seen a Bond movie. Because to me, they're all the same movie. Like, I, I can tell you the plot of every Bond movie. Uh, Terrorist does some shit. They gotta call James Bond. Uh, James Bond talks to Q. Q gives him, uh, a, you know, an arsenal of ridiculous weapons that he'll, by the end of the movie, find... Uh, be stuck in some predicament where one of these will always conveniently come of use... I've just never felt the need to watch uh, watch those movies. So uh, Star Wars, I just I actively hate, even though I don't have a great reason because they they are good movies. Uh, this movie, like I said, don't don't love it, don't hate it, but I also don't get the love for it um, so much. Like, there's a lot of movies I can say I feel that way about. Uh, like I'm not a, like people love Ghostbusters, and I'm sort of like. Yeah, it's a great movie. Not really anything special to me, but I see why people love it. I don't see why people are so in love with Halloween. Uh, it's an okay movie. It's far from being the best John Carpenter movie. The remake is way good, and I think uh, my uh, turning point when I started saying fuck this movie was after everyone's reactions to the remake, which was worlds better than this one. Uh, the writing purposes, the character purposes, so many reasons. But, um... Alright, so that's it for, uh... For Halloween, the credits are officially over, and I am officially done. I might try this again one day, depending on how well this one did. Alright, so until next time, uh... See you later. Oh yeah, uh, I guess while while I got the camera on and I'm recording and I'm planning to upload this, uh, new film attorneys coming out. Uh, I got a little delayed on them, but uh, still being manufactured. I got a ton of these things that are half made, and uh, I might get into some loftier, uh, more socially relevant material here soon. But uh, anyway, so, uh, god damn, I'm worse at ending these things than I am starting them. All right, uh, so uh, I'm done. Later.